Here is a quick overview of a mechanical Sperry gyro compass and how it works. Gyro compasses were developed and produced in response to magnetic compasses not working on metal ships and near the poles of Earth. The first workable gyro compass was invented by German inventor H. Anschutzkampfe in 1908. The idea was immediately picked up by Elmer, Ambrose, Sperry and the USA. Both inventors developed a useful gyro compass by 1911 and formed companies to mass produce them. An estimate of well over a million of them have been produced over the past 100 years by at least eight different companies. These include the Sperry Gyroscope Company in the USA, Hensholt, Greenwich Instruments and BAE Systems in the UK, Anschutz GmbH in Germany, Tokyo Keiki Corporation of Japan and Sagem in France. Mechanical gyro compasses are still being sold and used today in smaller boats, but in large ocean-going vessels they have largely been replaced with maintenance-free and much more precise fiber optics gyros. This model is a Sperry SR-130. It was built in 1982 by Tokyo Keiki Corporation in Japan. This is one of the simpler models and was used on smaller boats such as tugs and ferries. At the center of the gyro compass is a gyroscope. This one is a three-phase motor with a heavy brass rotor that spins clockwise as viewed from the north end at 12,000 rpm. The gyroscope is mounted on a three-axis gimbal. The north-south axis uses low friction precision ball bearings. The east-west axis serves no purpose in the north seeking function. It's for accommodating a pitching and rolling boat. The azimuth axis involves several parts. The inner element uses a friction-free, torsion-free wire suspension. It has a limited range of motion. The second azimuth axis, called the phantom ring, carries the whole assembly. A follow-up transformer, an amplifier and a motor form a servo system that drives the phantom element to follow the sensitive element and keeps it centered. Together, these parts make up an azimuth axis that is highly sensitive to the gyroscope torque with minimal interference from the forces and motions of a boat at sea. The compass card is connected to the phantom element and directly displays the compass orientation. Another important component is two sets of ballistic tanks mounted on the north-south gimbal. These tanks are filled with a dense oil and connected across the north and south ends of the gimbal with tubes. This allows the oil to flow via gravity to the side that is lower. Gyro compasses rely on several principles. One of these include the principle of gyroscopic inertia. A spinning gyroscope tends to keep the direction of its axis stable. Another principle is that of gyroscopic precession. Precession causes a gyroscope to respond to external torque by turning or precessing in a direction and on an axis that is perpendicular to the applied force. Gyro compasses also rely on gravity and on the rotation of Earth on its axis. In other words, they rely on a change in direction of gravity. This means that gyro compasses will not work on the north or south pole because the direction of gravity at the poles remains constant. How does it work? To illustrate how a gyro compass works, this one has a 90 degree east error. The north end of the gyro points due east. Due to gyroscopic inertia and the turning of Earth, the north end of the gyro will appear to rise at the rate of 15 degrees per hour. Note, technically the rotation of Earth is divided into two components, elevation, which is calculated as the sine of latitude, and azimuth, the cosine of latitude. For some reason not clear to me, the change in elevation observed on the gyro compass is the full 15 degrees per hour. 
The reason is likely due to the gyroscope precession reacting to residual friction on the azimuth bearings. So instead of observing a rise in elevation of about 10.5 degrees per hour and then accompanying change in azimuth of about 4.5 degrees per hour, as I calculated from our 44 degree north latitude, the full 15 degree per hour change in elevation is observed. This observation is made on a spirit level on the north-south gimbal marked with a 2 arc minute angle scale. 15 degrees per hour corresponds to 15 arc minutes per minute of time. Remember that the north end of the rotor appears to rise in elevation, but in reality, Earth is rotating while the gyroscope remains steady due to the principle of gyroscopic inertia. Once the gyroscope has tipped south, gravity causes fluid to flow from the north ballistic tanks into the south ones and apply a downward force on the south end of the gimbal. Due to gyroscopic precession, the gyro compass gradually begins to turn counterclockwise towards north. The gyro compass will swing past north like a pendulum. Earth will keep turning and once more tip the rotor from our perspective, this time causing the fluid to fill the north ballistic tanks. Precession will once again gradually swing the gyro compass clockwise towards north. The north seeking action of the gyro compass is dampened by weights strategically added to the north south gimbal. The dampening causes the pendulum motion to eventually settle on north. From my experience, it never truly settles but keeps wandering back and forth by about one degree. This could be due to the fact that this instrument has not been officially calibrated in several decades. And there you have it, the gyro compass, a device that seeks and settles on the meridian as a response to the turning of Earth on its axis. Thanks for listening.